Okay, so um, tonight what I'm going to start is uh, doing a little bit of chatter here about uh, the bevel. The bevel is the, well, it's the edge. Without a bevel, you have no edge. But he says set the bevel turn gets kicked around like it's some sort of like binary on off event um, it's not really an event it's a process first you know you might ask you know what is a bevel well you have your razor your blade and the bevel it's this section up here right where you see the highlight I have this like kitty drawing here, alright, and the bevel is this section here, here's the spine down here, alright, this is the toe up here in the front, like here is your heel, your tank, alright, so, the section in here with the silly lines, that's the grind, that's in here, if you have a wedge, there's no grind, but, <clears throat> basically, the spine creates this angle, all right? Uh, you lay it on the stone, all right? The spine is in contact here. The blade's in contact there. The grind comes up away. Now, in the course of honing, you know, you grind in a way both the spine and, you know, your edge and your bevel. And... As the spine is lowering down, the edge is coming up, and that angle is maintained. The angle is always a bone of contention, especially in argumentative circles. People want to know what the best angle is. That's something you have to figure out. It's something that you want to know about, but it's something that you don't have to freak out over until you learn how to set the bevel. Because without setting the bevel, the angle doesn't help you. Now, um, this is a Chalcera 1K uh, made by Naniwa. It's a thousand grit stone to water stone, essentially splash and go. It does soak in a little. You saw me uh, use this a second ago. Right. So that makes it a little slurry. Um, don't need to do that. You can live without it. Just use it every now and then to surface the stone. Works pretty well. So anyway, so you buy a razor on eBay, right? And uh, you go on your favorite shaving forum and you say, what do I do? And 400 guys jump in and say, you got to set the bevel. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is, uh, you want to make this line. I'm use a pencil. You want to make this line continuous. You want to make it essentially a line, like a point that goes from A to B uh, that doesn't concave in, although sometimes it can't concave out. That's fine. Straight is fine too. Concave in is rarely fine. We call that a frown. It's usually a problem. Um, that should probably not be your first raise at home if you have one of them. Now, you know. This is like a kitty drawing. This is not what your edge looks like on the magnification. This is just a loose illustration. And basically, what you want to do is you want to hone the steel until you make your edge like that. Now that's the theory. The reality is something else because nothing in life is that perfect. Steel is not paper, but this is the ideology that you're looking for. This is one and two faces. These constitute the bevel. This is your cutting edge. You need to make these faces come together at a perfect point. 
disruptions along the way will cause you problems. Now, we use a stone, we grind away, and now the next question is, how do you know when the bevel is set? Well, there's a number of tests out there. I really don't subscribe to too many of them. Somebody cuts grapes, somebody cuts tomatoes, somebody cuts paper. I guess it doesn't matter. If it works for you, it works for you. Um, you can't prove too much one way or another here. I can cut a tomato in half with a credit card that I sharpened on uh, sandpaper. But if you get that thing down, then it's your test and then that works. One test that I found a long time ago to sharpen like uh, scalpel blades, something similar to that, was a uh, nail test. And what you do is, you can see it, like a 45 degree angle, maybe a little less. You see like I have, it, it's bouncing off my nail for the most part. It tells me I have no edge. Now I don't need to test this to prove there's no edge. I mean there's rust on it, there's chips, there's all kinds of stuff. This is your typical $5 eBay blade. Uh, I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. Some type of soul engine. Full hollow. Five eighths. Probably a nice piece. We'll know after we hone it. But uh, generally speaking, vintage razor. And once it's honed, it shaves off. Now, you'll notice the stone is not really soaking in water because I waited a little while ago. These guys will take on a little bit of water and then they stable down, stabilize. So, <clears throat> what do you do now? Uh, well, you got a home. So, um, get your blade on the stone. Can you see that? Yeah, let me move. All right. Um, you'll notice my heel is a little forward. This is one position. Straight on is another position. This is another position, toe leading, but I'm not going to recommend it because you can see I brought the shoulder up. This is something else that you probably never have to do. All right, so cutting surface all along the stone here seems pretty good when I say good it seems to be pretty flat but I don't really know yet now um, your honing your strokes you can do anything you want it really doesn't matter you like circles circles work you like heel leading X strokes one, two. Now, the X, right? The X is, watch the toe. One, two. You made an X. That's the X pattern. Right? Um, some people do just straight forward like this. I can't say that's a good way to hold. Uh, a couple of things go on with the stone, the abrasive. You wind up going back and forth. The abrasive dials in. You wind up with your striations going straight to the edge. I don't know if anybody's ever proved it, but I want my striations at like, you know, like I say, a 45 degree angle or 30 or something like that. And I want them even. I don't use circles because then the striations are nuts. I find for me, straight striations on an angle, all lined up like little tin soldiers. That works for me. And I want it to be even all the way across. And if I look at it under a scope or a loop or whatever, I want that edge, the cutting edge. I want it to all be uniform and consistent. If it isn't, the bevel's not done. All right? Now, um, I know I showed you the beginning of the thumbnail test before, but I can't show you too much more than that at the moment because this blade is toast but eventually at some point in honing you want to know am I done go back to that test and in theory what would happen is the blade would grab into my nail right and as I drag it through it doesn't cut your finger forget that right you're riding on the apex of your nail you're not cutting anything here and it just digs in 
and your nail will sense any roughness. It will also sense any deviation in edge width. Edge width is important in this discussion. It's not talked about often enough because most of the people talking about setting bevels are more interested in you paying them to home for you or doing some other crap. That brings them money. I just want to see you get past like the hump of setting the bevel. So, edge width is this dimension, like right here. Right, right up here. I know, it's a piece of paper, but that dimension needs to be consistent all along the length of the edge. If you have any wavering dimension, you're not going to have a great edge. There's a tolerance limit. You know, at some point, it's going to be as close to perfect as possible. It's never going to be perfect because nothing ever is. But once you get to that point, then you're good to go. Up to that point, you're not good to go, and you're going to have a crappy shave. doesn't matter what you do honing later on. If you don't get the bevel right, you're dead in the water. You are not going to make it up on the next stone. Even if you could, it's going to take you like 10 times longer. This is a 1K. We set bevels on 1K for the most part. I know someone's going to chime in and say, well, we used to use a 4K. Well, that was a Norton, okay? And a 4K Norton isn't really all that much finer than this stone because Norton's K system is a little whacked. All right, I forget what the particle size here is. I think it's about 14 micron or something like that. Um, but if I go up to 8K, their 8K is uh, 3 micron. And in this company's system, 3 micron is a 5K. So you see there's a difference in numbers. So that's where the whole micron thing becomes a problem. All right, well, it's not a problem, but relying on it to be, like, consistent, that, that's a problem because it ain't happening. You're going by Shaftons, they're a little different. A little closer to this. But the Nortons are something else. So anyway, we use the 1K. If you were going to try and set the bevel on a 3K, you're not looking at, like, twice as much work. You're looking at exponentially greater amounts of work because of the particle size difference. So 1K is a good starting point. Is it perfect? I don't know. You know, uh, Somebody gave their blessing on it. I've been rolling with it. It works for me. So anyway, you have this thing here called grip. Now, I'm choked up right up to the heel, and I'm torquing a little bit. So basically, I'm pushing the blade to the stone. Now, you can't see it, but I can. And these are things you need to learn to do. I'm looking at the blade. I'm seeing the reflections of the overhead light. As I'm torquing, I can see that reflection move. It's telling me I'm twisting the blade too much. I don't want that much torque on the blade. I don't want to twist anything. Because if I twist, this bevel is not going to sit right on the snow. But you need a little pressure. All right? Um, how much pressure? I don't know. Go get a pizza scale and, you know, put it under your stone and, and figure it out. But um, if you're twisting the blade, it's too much. You don't want, like, light, little, tiny, like, finishing strokes because you're never going to cut anything. This is bevel setting. This is heavy lifting, we call it. Um, not really. If I had a chip, it would be heavy lifting. But you want to have pressure. But you don't want to have distortion of the blade. And it takes time to learn that. So, remember something. You got to do it. And you figure it out as you go along. There's no recipe. I can't tell you it's four pounds of pressure for 30 strokes. There's no recipe. That's bullshit. It doesn't work. All right? Uh, grip is important, though. I got my finger in here at the heel. Allows me to get, like, nice and snug and really feel everything. All right? I rely on X strokes. You can use any strokes you want. It doesn't matter. All you're doing is grind and steal away. Whatever works for you is fine. You want to do this crazy cockamamie like, you know, hey, look at me stroke that somebody's doing. Fine, whatever. You know, me, that doesn't fly. 
I got a million reasons why I would never do that. It doesn't matter. Why I do something doesn't matter. You got to do what works for you. If doing that works for you, then do it. All right. So back to this. Now this isn't the only thing I ever do when I'm setting a bevel. Sometimes I might use two hands. More as a guide. All right. Let me throw some more water around here. All right. So I get a little sloppy with bevels. Huh? So what I might do. All right. I pitch the blade like this. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, and um, I, I really won't use three fingers like this, but I'm in a weird position. I just want to show you the blade motion. Up, back, up, back. We call that a half stroke. When you do them, you have to count because you got to do the same number of strokes this way as you do this way. For some reason or another, it's easier for me to do it that way. Um, one-handed. Right. Now, you want to work on some muscle memory. You can't see my arm, but I'm cognizant of where my elbow is positioned. And I'm keeping things very level, very stiff. That way I'm sure to not like increase and decrease pressure errantly without being you know, uh, cognizant. Helps me keep my stroke on track. In other words, you don't want to do a full stone stroke here and then a half stroke stone here. Well, it's like two thirds, but you don't want to do this. Because you're not giving the blade the same amount of work on both sides. You want to try and be as you know even as possible. Because the bevel should be even on both sides. It's gonna be a little uneven because this was made by you know some guy in a factory back in like the eighteen hundreds. You know, he's working on a wheel, a wet wheel, and grinding. It's not, it wasn't made by NASA, okay? But you don't need to compound those irregularities. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, back to like the normal thing here. Just doing some simple egg strokes. Now, I'm not going to pretend that like I'm going to be setting the bevel here on the camera tonight because, well... Tomorrow's Christmas Eve, and I have to work tomorrow. This particular blade is going to take some time. Now I know that because all up and through here, under a 4x and 10x loop, I can see there's some corrosion. So I'm going to have to cut back some steel. But this clip I'm doing here, right? This isn't about you know you doing what I'm doing. What I am doing is trying to explain that. First of all, you gotta set the bevel. If you don't, you have no edge. The bevel is the foundation. So if the whole thing, the edge is your house and your foundation is crap, it's gonna collapse. That's first. Second thing is, is you know, I keep seeing and hearing uh, a lot of, what, what do you call it, like uh, doubt or controversy or any number of uh, things you know fear-based stuff like you know oh, I don't know if I can do it of course you can do it I can do it cavemen did this stuff all right they didn't have like a fancy German razor but you know they were grinding steel on rocks at some point all right maybe it wasn't cavemen I made that up all right I don't know if you can see, but I'm starting to get some nice undercut here. Undercut is telling me the face of the bevel is bringing the edge down to the stone. And the water is then able to run up over the bevel and over that line that I call the shinogi. <clears throat> and that's what it would be if it was a sword, but it's not a sword. And it comes up onto the grind. And you know, that part of the razor, the concave. That lets you know you're making headway. Now, things that affect that. You see the swath in here? That breaks the resistance. The water is not water resistance. Surface tension, that's the word. 
Okay, so that's going to let it ride up a little easier. Okay, speed. If I go really fast, okay, I can like literally shoot under the water. Okay, um, whether or not the stone is pitched one way, front, back, whatever, gravity, the amount of water on the stone, a lot of water on the cut is easy. A little bit of water like this or less on the cut is tough. I use the undercut to judge, but I'm very consistent with how much water I have on the stone, the speed of my stroke, the grind of the blade, well the grind of the blade, like a full hollow will undercut differently than a wedge, obviously, um, because the wedge is going to be, you know, it's not going to have that dip in, that grind, right, so it's going to push back on the water a little bit, but I own a lot of wedges. I own a bunch of them. There's like, I don't know, eight of them over there right now. Those big wading butchers. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, as you do it, you pay attention. And you develop um, experience. And you know what you're looking at. You know what you did yesterday. And you do it today. And if you, don't have, if you can't see today what you saw yesterday, then you made a change. Well, something changed. And it's good to figure that out. Now, see on the way coming back? I don't have any undercut up here. And I'm wondering why that could be. Now, you can do a couple of things. Alright? <clears throat> and it might just be because the stone is on an angle, but I don't think so. I can take my loop. And I can look. And sure as hell, the blade is up. All right, see that? I got like a little loop over here. Well, it's not a little loop. It's a photo loop. Um, a lot of guys, they get... Um, I got one over here. Let's see if I can get it out without waking everybody in the house up. Put this over there. They get these loops. It's like a uh, Jules loop, right? This is a great loop. It's expensive. I got it at a street sale, but... Uh, I think if you buy it, it's like 45 bucks. It's a Bausch and Long. It's a 15X. I think it's a triplet. Um, you know, the, the field of view isn't that big. Um, you get a photo loop. All right. The objective area is much bigger. The working distance is better. Um, usually, you know, comparative, you know, money spent. Um, you're going to do better with something like that, I think. You know, those pocket microscopes uh, with LED illumination. I hate LED illumination. It, it does not give you a good view. It doesn't do well on metal. Um, I don't want to get into the whole, like, thing with waveforms and whatever, but you're actually better off with uh, an incandescent sauce or a halogen. Um... So, anyway, you got one of those things and you use it fine. I'm just saying, if you're going to go out and buy something, buy a photo loop. You can get them for like 10 bucks. You don't have to buy a good one like that one. That one's broken, but if it was new, it would be about 80 bucks. You can buy a $10 loop. Um, gives you a nice view. 4X is what I look at most things with most of the time. I also have a 10X jeweler's loop, and then you saw that 15X jeweler's loop. I use them less. Behind me is this giant microscope. I use that for shits and giggles sometimes, but if I looked at everything under a microscope, nothing would get home. So what do I know? I know my toe is up. Right? That means I got a roll. Now, what's a roll? A roll is when you do kind of a motion like this while you're honing. It slows you down. Not all of the blade is in contact at the same time. So across a six inch or eight inch stone, if you're going one way and you're in full contact and you come back and you have to do a roll, you're really going to need more work on that side. How much? I don't know. You got to figure it out. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a roll up. See? My heel's up. All right, I have pressure but I'm not torquing anything, right? I need to have this down, right? More than likely what's gonna happen with this blade when I really get to it 
because then I'm going to put a smile on it. So now I can roll both sides. And I'm looking at it here on the light, and it seems like it's kind of okay. The bevel's uneven as hell. I mean, it's a five dollar razor. It's going to shave great, but you know, can't expect like real pretty stuff for five bucks. I mean, that's what you pay. So, um, just keep doing that. Now, I use X strokes because I like to traverse the stone. I like to keep as much of the blade on as possible. I like to turn the stone around often. Keep my wear pattern on the stone even. You know, sometimes when I do videos, I, I don't do this because it's a pain in the ass, but uh, it's something I really, I gotta just say, it's like kind of important for the life of your stone and your sanity. By wearing the stone on all sides, you're maximizing the stone's potential, you're reaping the benefits of your entire investment. And these things are expensive. The stone was 80 bucks. I cut it down because I, I travel with this one. But um, just wearing on one side means the other side's higher. And then I'm going to have to lap more. And you know, it seems like a tedious point. Like, Someone's going to say, well, that never happens. Well, if you hone a lot, it happens. You know, if you got two razors and you hone once a year, then no, it doesn't matter what you do. Now, I saw the uh, undercut going wacky, so I knew I had an issue. Another way to know if you have an issue or not, let's say you're new for honey, new at honey, what you do is this thing called the Sharpie test. Take a Sharpie, and you, I'm not going to do it because I, I hate having Sharpie on my blade. <laughs> but you just run it along the bevel, the entire length, right? And you make your bevel black, right? You got to do it with a dry blade. If it's wet, it's not going to work that right. And then you're doing all this like back and forth work and the ink smears. So you got to dry it off. You put Sharpie on it, all right? You let it dry a little bit. And you come back to your stone, all right? And then you hone. You go a couple of passes. And then you look at your edge. You look at your bevel. If you're making contact, the Sharpie is gone. 1K will take the Sharpie off in two or three passes. All right? Where you still see black, that's where you're not making contact. And then you have to adjust your stroke. You also want to check your stone. Okay, you want to make sure it's flat. Stone's not flat, you're going to have a hell of a time set in the bevel. I can get away with some unevenness, I can feel it, I can roll with it, but yeah, I still keep my stone flat. I believe in dead flat, but I don't get nuts, but dead flat is dead flat. I use an Atoma, I use DMT, I use sandpaper on the back of a stainless plate. You know, I check with a straight edge and I make sure it's flat. Now, back to that test I was showing you. I'm not done. Okay, this is not set. All right, need a lot more work to set a bevel than that, especially on a blade that was trash like this. I can still see weirdness. But if I take this, all right, boom, now I have cut into my nail. As I drag through, slow, just like that. Uh, I can feel it. I can feel the roughness. This is very sensitive, okay? And if you're not freaking out because you have a razor blade on your finger, I have a lot of grief up here, a lot of grief, I can feel it. You can also feel the nail spreading out a little bit, so I have some edge width differences to contend with going along. I would guesstimate I probably have a good 15 minutes of what I would say hardcore bevel setting. I'm going to put wear on the spine. It's not going to be pretty, but it needs to wear because this has to wear with the edge. Um, but it'll get done, you know, and it's done when it's done. It's not done till it's not done. You can think it's done, but that doesn't mean it's done. All right. Um, sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it goes quick. Most of the time it takes longer. It very rarely goes quick. Another way to check, right? You take the blade, you hold it straight up and down. Well, 
and this isn't really showing too well. It holds straight up and down. Now I have a point sauce one. I have a panel, LED panel over me. <clears throat> over the blade actually. It's about eye height. And I look along here. I can actually sight in on it and get close in. If I see any glints of light, okay, what that tells me is the top of the blade is like a little flat and the light's catching it. So I know I don't have perfect edge width resolution across. I have unevenness. I have like a little plateau there. Or it could be a little bit of a bar bending over and that's catching the light. So that's got to go too. Now, I guess a couple of other things. You know, uh, you read people like you get a blade and someone says it's honed and you get it and you're not certain and yeah, you do the thumb pad test, that's another thing, okay? I got no grab here, I'm not done, okay? Um, <clears throat> so you got it and it's really not shave ready like the guy who sold it to you for $7 said it was. <laughs> that's a joke. Um, so what do you do? Someone will say, well, dull the blade. Well, you don't need to do that, okay? It doesn't help you, okay? There's nothing there to work with. Even if there was, you're going to be honing, you're taking metal off. The minute you see swath, you're in new steel. Now, if you really need to take steel off, okay, because, like, let's say you got some nasty-ass foil or um, wire edge, do this, right? That really does the edging, okay? That bullshit on glass, all you wind up doing is like a baller trick, okay? It's one of the biggest jokes out there. You bend in the burr over, you can strop it back to life 90% of the time. Dull it on glass. Oh God, the stuff I see sometimes, it's crazy. Just take it, one of my, is it this one? No, it's my other one. I got like all kinds of cuts in the edge over here because I'll do that, all right? I'll um, do some crazy honing thing and then I wind up with too much uh, extension on the bevel, I want to call it, because of my half strokes and um, yeah, half strokes, I do them, but they're not great for the edge and not good for the steel. When you're coming back, you're like, you're pulling steel forward a little bit. You wind up with a very flimsy edge. So I'll grind it down a little bit. Not like a bread knife where I'm doing this, because that's nuts. Just enough to take off that, that very, you know, flimsy thing up on top that's going to become like a distraction or a useless wire or a foil. I do it right on the snow. That way I know for sure. It's real abrasive. Glass? Psh, waste of time. Alright. Um, oh, I know that's going to bring flames. <clears throat> anyway. The thing about setting the bevel is, it seems scary at first. My first bevel set was, it was scary. Um, I put too much wear on a bulker that I bought new. The edge came out good though. I shaved with that edge and I was proud. And uh, that's the way it's got to go. You get a blade like this. You don't do it on a hundred and twenty dollar brand new book. That's it's going to force you to like hone better, I think. But you know, you're still going to wear on the blade. And you don't need to do that. Um, but anyway, you got to do it. You got to set the bevel. Everybody can do it. Okay. A um, couple of things. You know, start out with a decent razor. I mean, this has some rust on it, but you clean it off. You know, don't buy something that's got like a quarter of an inch flat over here and like, you know, a, a toe that's like an eighth of an inch up at the toe and, you know, the blade's full all the way. Don't buy something like that. Don't try and hone that. Chances are you're just going to be driving yourself crazy. I can't tell you how many times I see it through. I can't set the bevel. That's like the opener, you know, and then like five posts in. <clears throat> guy uh, shows a photo of it and... Blade looks like, I don't know, went to World War II. Now you want something that looks decent. You want to start with a gold dollar? Fine. Most of them have like sketchy geometry, so I can't say that's a great idea. But you can get a gold dollar that has decent geometry. So if you buy a box of 10, about a third of them are going to be okay. And after that, you know, you beat the hell out of it, no one cares. It's a Chinese letter opener. Um. 
My problem with gold dollars is they're not really prone to holding an edge. So, you, know, you do all that work and then you have to like do something with the blade like five or seven shaves later. And that's my experience and it's not from honing one of them. I got a bunch of them. There's like five of them here. And I've had a number of them over the years. For five bucks, it's a razor, it'll shave. But, you know, when you're learning, it might be a good idea to have like a nice piece of good, you know, vintage steel that you get an edge on it, it's going to hold it. So the next, you know, you're going to hone and you're going to go shave and you're going to shave with it a few times and get a good feel for like what your work, you know. Then you go back and you re hone it, you know. The st if the shave is starting to fall off on you, so wondering, was it my honing or whatever? Uh, but at the same time, you know, you can get them really cheap and you screw them up, nobody cares. Um, I'm continuing with the hone here because I'm thinking that there's stuff I forgot to talk about. And maybe I just didn't get to my point. So yeah, that's it. You got to do it. It seems scary. It's not scary. It's not exactly easy, but it's not exactly hard. The one common denominator amongst anybody that is successful at honing at any level. And I'm not talking about who likes what edge, but that bullshit. I'm talking about the common Joe who sits down and hones a razor so he can shave. I'm not talking about the guys that want to go fight on Facebook over like who's Captain Poob out of the honing circle. The one common denominator is honing. In other words, you hone a lot. Don't expect to get it the first time out. And you may get it the first time out. It doesn't mean you're going to get it the second time out. And eventually you'll get a razor that's just going to piss you off to no end. And it's going to take somebody. And that guy could have less experience than you. And he's going to drop some info on you. And you're going to be like, oh man. <laughs> How did I miss that? You know? So humility plays a big part in this. I find that most people who I think really have good game, they exist in this world without fanfare, no pomp, no circumstance, like my buddy Nelson, right? You're not going to find neon lights around Nelson's house anytime soon, you know. Um, goes to work, he comes home, he owns, shoots me emails. Post good stuff on forums sometimes, and he's very, uh, I don't know what the word I want to use here is, but uh, he has a humble approach. You know, he's pretty even, Steven. You know, if you've got an issue, he'll say so. I'm not going to pretend that he knows everything, because he doesn't know everything. And, you know, he's asked me questions, and I go ahead and answer and I've asked them questions, and he'll throw suggestions at him. I'm fairly certain the guy's honed way more razors than I have. Um, but that's not even it. It's not a matter of how many razors you hone. You can own the same razor 15,000 times. If you can only get yourself to an 8K edge, then how much experience do you really have? And when you talk to a guy like him, and there's a lot of guys like that, but you, know, you got to seek them out, right? The ones you see first are the guys with, like, drama, controversy, anger, fast answers, a lot of bullshit, ton of bullshit, you know, just, you know, shaving world is full of men that are essentially trying to be gentlemen, and, you know, and they're trying to figure stuff out. Um... You know, sometimes the loudest voice garners the most attention, but that might not be the best source of the information you're looking for. And then every now and then you get some cowboy comes along and he's got great game, he's just a jackass. <clears throat> and that's fine, you know. I can have my head up pretty far up my ass sometimes too, but I try to do a reality check on a pretty regular basis because, you know, really, this is shaving. nothing else so you got to set the bevel get yourself a razor get yourself a stone sit down do it write stuff down 
do logical things. If somebody tells you to hone uphill on Wednesday nights under a pyramid, you might want to question that. If someone tells you that they're using a honing stroke that will solve everybody's problems, you got to question that. Because all you're doing is taking steel off a blade. And just about any stroke you do is going to do that. And no one stroke is really going to do it better. If you have geometry problems, you may want to do some like real heel eating, like extreme stuff. And that your cutting is kind of going a little bit more this way. And I don't want to get too deep into it. But, you know, for basic bevel setting, I was looking at Lynn, uh, I had did a new video. And his X strokes are like this. Like, I can't even do it. They're so subtle, you know? Like, he doesn't come all the way toe over. Okay, and he made a point of bringing that up. And I go at least half of the blade, and sometimes I come all the way. But I tell you what, I like what he was saying, because once I come over here, judging my pressure becomes a little difficult. I'm, you know, I got it down, I'm good, but, you know, um, if most of the blade is on the stone, then I don't have to worry about that. So I'm actually trying to incorporate Lynn Abrams' subtle style because it makes sense, you know, and I was able to hear what the guy was saying because he just sits down and haunts. You know, forget whether or not he's got the best edges, who gives a shit? I'm not shaving with Lynn's edges, but I can take his advice. I can follow his lead. I can learn something from everyone. Anybody can. You see, you'll notice I'm doing like a little bit of a hook thing. But anyway, I'm still honing here and I don't even know if I've made my point. Anyway, you gotta get the bevel done. Okay, anybody can do it. There's no big thing. Okay, it's not like some kind of NASA secret or any of that other cryptic bullshit that some guys allude to. There's no like special bevel, bevel setters club. Anybody can do this. All right, all you have to use is common sense, be consistent, and work at it. You may hone for a while before you get the bevel. Okay, and you may progress to 3K before you were supposed to a number of times. Eventually, you'll figure it out. Learn by doing. Learn by repetition. Write stuff down. The more you do stuff, the more you experience. The more you experience, the more knowledge in your toolbox. The better your toolbox, the better your chances are of having success. There are no rules here. You can own any way you want. Well, there is one rule. <laughs> the bevel's got to be set. All right. Um... Yeah, I could continue owning, I could continue talking, but I don't know that I would be helping anymore. Uh, um, and I already, you know, I don't know if I'd be able to give you any more information. I try and keep it simple, alright? Um, probably over uh, Christmas break, I'm probably going to finish owning this thing. Shave with it. It's going to be a nice blade to shave with. It's a nice size, it's light, it's nimble. Um, I actually have a little trouble with 5.8s, but because <clears throat> I like a bigger blade, but this one has a nice feel and a nice balance. I think I'm going to be all right. all right. I don't know if you can see it. I'm starting to pick up a little bit more undercut on the toe on the reverse stroke. See? All right. See? And that means the blade's progressing. I got more work to do. I did the, um, I'll do the thumbnail test one more time. I wish I could impart the feeling, but I just got to go with my verbal description. Mm -hmm. Boom, more bite. I can feel the blade bit into my nail better. But I still have a lot of roughness. And that's just the way it is. It's a beat up blade. It needs a lot of work. Um, not going to spend another 25 minutes on camera here doing that because I think you got the point. I may make another one, um, another clip on the uh, bevel setting. 
Um, I may not. Uh, it depends on how the questions go, and if there's any questions. And uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to throw them out there. And if I can't answer them, somebody else watching the video probably can. All right, that's it. Bevel setting 101.